Hey everybody, welcome to another M365.video SharePoint Short. This is David Warner. Today we're gonna to talk about SharePoint library components and specifically how you can connect your web parts or extensions to the functionality that was defined and created in your SharePoint library components. So in this video, we're gonna see how to establish the connection between a library component and a web part or extension. We're gonna see what updates are required to the library component. We're then gonna see what updates are required to the web part or the extension. And then we're gonna see a demo of that inside of an actual web part. I'll show you how to prepare your library component for consumption, and then how to prepare your web part to receive and access the functionality in that web part. And then I'm gonna show you a demo of how to accomplish all of that within both a library component and a web part. Now, the first step for connecting web parts and extensions to your library component is to actually prepare the library component. And that's accomplished using what's called an NPM symlink. Essentially what this does is it creates a shortcut from your global node modules folder to the solution location where your library component exists. So you're not actually creating a full NPM package of your library component, but this symlink or symbolic link represents a connection to the library component for your web part as if you were using another NPM package module. So that will take care of preparing your library component. The next step is to connect your web part or extension to that library component symlink so that your web part or extension is aware of the package functionality available in the library component. This too is done using the npm link command, but you'll include the name of your library component symlink. We'll see how to do all of that. And then you'll update the package.json within your web part or extension. Now this all may sound a little confusing, but let's jump over into a demo and I'll show you exactly how it's done. It's actually very simple. Let me set the context for this first part of the demo. On the left here, I've got Visual Studio Code, and it's open to a solution, just a simple scaffolded out library component out of the box. On the right, I've got a command prompt that's connected to that library component solution. And on the bottom right, I've got my global node modules folder. Now this is important for us because when we execute the npm link command, this is where we're going to see that sim link created. Now, before we actually execute the npm link command, I wanted to make a note of what it actually uses as a name for our link. If you go into the package.json of your library component, and close the file explorer, we see that it uses the name that's defined here in our package. Now we'll also use the version here that's defined to make the connection between the web part or extension to this library component. So it's important to note that these two elements will be required and used when we make the connection between our web part or extension and our library component. One more thing we're going to do as well before we execute the npm link command is just make one simple addition to our solution. So we're gonna go ahead and open our library component. We'll close our file explorer. If you've worked with it in the past, you know that out of the box, it scaffolds out a simple public name function that just returns the name of our solution. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add to this another very simple version function that defines a return string that is the name of our version. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And this is important because I just wanna show you how we can make this connection to these two functions once we connect the web part to our library component. So now we're ready to go ahead and execute the npm link command and create the sim link for our library component. So it's as simple as going into our command prompt and just typing npm link. Now before I press enter and execute this, keep an eye down on our global node modules folder. What's gonna happen is one, once it executes the npm link, you're going to see, and it's already there, an added node module link to our JS library component. And as I mentioned, it used the name that was defined in our package.json to define the package name in our node modules folder. Okay, now that it's done, it's important to note right here, what's happened is it's making a connection from our global node modules folder to the location of where my library component solution lives. So when we make the connection to this library component here in our node modules, that's how the web part is going to know to connect to the files here to consume the functionality. 
Now, one last thing we want to do before we go over and prepare our web part to consume this functionality is we want to go ahead and do a gulp build on our library component. It's important because if we try to access this functionality without at least one first build being performed, we'd actually see an error being thrown in our web part when it tries to access that. So let's go ahead and just do a gulp build. All right, now let's jump over into our web part solution and see how we can prepare it to make a connection to this library component functionality. Now let me reset the context for this second half of the demo. On the left side, we've got Visual Studio Code opened. I've just scaffolded out an out-of-the-box web part. On the right, we've got a command prompt open to that component web part that I scaffolded out here on the left. And then in the Explorer window on the right, we've actually opened it up to the web part solution that I scaffolded out. So the first thing we want to do is execute the NPM link. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and go into the node modules that show the local module packages for this web part. Now we're going to go up into the command prompt and I'm just going to type NPM link and I'm going to include the name of my library component symlink that was created. In this case, it's JS library component and we'll just go ahead and select enter. Now you can see that it's created that connection right here. And if we were to go down into our node modules and resort by date modified, we can see it's now added that JS library component sim link to our library component functionality here in our local node modules folder. So now that we've executed and completed the npm link command to create and connect to that symbolic link for our library component, the next step is to update the package.json file for our web part so that we can add this dependency to our web part. So we'll go ahead and do that by opening up our package.json and we want to do it in our dependency. So we'll go ahead and hit enter and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in. You see it's the name that was defined for our symbolic link for our library component and the version. Now that we've added it as a dependency to our solution, we'll go ahead and close the package.json and we're going to go into the source file of our web part, the primary TypeScript file, and we're going to go ahead and now begin importing our library component functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the import command, and it's quite simple, just like any other import statement. We're just simply giving it a name, in this case, library component, and the from property is that symlink name that we created when we instantiated the npm link command for our library component. So now we can go ahead and go into our public render method here and we can start making a new instance of our library component import. So we'll go ahead and uh, start off with a constant. We'll call it library instance and we'll just simply say new and then we'll start typing library component. We see it comes up for us and we're looking for the class name that was defined in our library component. And there we have an instance of our library component functionality. And now we can use that instance to gain access to those functions that we know exist, the name and version function within our library component. Just to confirm everything's working, we'll go ahead and make an alert to the browser window within our workbench for this web part. So we'll just go ahead and on a new line, do alert, and we see that if I say library instance dot, there's both of those functions available. We'll go ahead and execute the version and we'll go ahead and save. And then we'll come on over to the command prompt here and just to make sure everything's working fine, we'll go ahead and issue a gulp serve. I'm using dash dash no browser just simply because we don't need the browser open for this context. All right, now that it's done, let's go ahead and jump over to my preferred browser window where I've already navigated to my workbench. Okay, so here we are in a workbench of one of my uh, development site collections in my tenant. So I should simply be able to come up and I'm gonna do a search looking for a web part called component. We see there it is, our library component web part. Now once I add this, we should simply see an alert. And there we do. This is version 0.0.1. .0 so we know it's successfully connecting to our library component. Pretty cool stuff. This really shows off how we can utilize library components to create write once, use everywhere functionality that is available to our web parts and our extensions. I hope you're as excited about working with SharePoint library components as I am. Here's some helpful links to help you along the way. 
The first two is the official Microsoft documentation on library component overview and tutorial. The second two are additional videos that I've created, as well as many more to come that you can check out at my website, warner.digital. Thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe in YouTube to get alerts for all my future videos.